Well, I got one side installed. I'm going to show you how I did that side. And honestly, I'm going to go ahead and do the shielded wire just to be extra safe here on making sure that I'm doing everything I can to possibly keep this amp, this preamp quiet. But you can probably just use a couple of pieces of wire. This is, I'm cutting off a piece that's about an inch long. And it's going to end up even be shorter than that. Just like that. It's going to be connecting this RCA jack that's going right in that hole there. And you end up with something that looks like that. And then this end here will go into the circuit board. And there we go. And yeah, <laughs> we're only shielding like that, that little piece of the wire, and that little piece of the wire, but who knows? I doubt it's going to make a huge difference. Not sure it's really worth the, the hassle. You could probably just put a couple little tiny short pieces of wire there and be just as good. The last thing we need to do is we need to put the ground on the front of the board, front of the chassis for the turntable ground wire. And it's gonna be it's gonna be right here. And it connects to this connector, this this right here on the board. That's the main ground. And so we want to, just like we did with the power ground, we want to scrape off any overspray or paint that's on here. And we're going to get a one of those little terminal lugs that bolt down and put it under the screw and attach it right here. So like I said, make sure you scrape this off really good like this. Get nice down to nice clean metal. And then we're going to make up our little brass connection here for the turntable ground. So now we're going to do the chassis ground to the board, which is also where the turntable ground wire hooks up to. We got this little brass screw here, and we got this little solder solder lug we've we've put on here. So we're gonna solder this on, bolt this into the front of the board, or the front of the chassis, I mean, and then solder this into the board, and then we just gotta hook up our power wires and we're ready to go see what this thing sounds like. We probably are going to do a quick voltage check on it with the tubes in it and just see if everything looks like it's you know, running at the level we'd like to see everything running at. And then go see what this thing sounds like compared to my old one. Now, I didn't do this on the last one that I soldered up, but I should have. These little solder tabs, it's a good idea to put a little flux on them. We can prop this guy up. And solder this wire onto this lug. Then bolt this thing into the front of the chassis and solder it on the board and we'll have our turntable ground connection all finished up here. Just like that. And so we have our little, we have our little lock washer on there. Run this through the front of the board, front of the chassis, put a washer, and a nut. And then 
We'll bend this wire up. and feed it into that hole. And solder this where it goes to the board here. Just like that. Connect it on the inside here. Probably spin this around a little bit with my finger. Get my handy little pliers. Put a little screwdriver in there to keep the screw from turning. We snug that down. And then the final piece is we have this little Real nut there. You just put the little wire for the turntable ground in there and tighten snug that down. And then you get your turntable grounded. Okay. So all we've really got left now is to connect these two boards together. And as you can see it's labeled. DC-285, DC-285, we got four terminals here, so we can run wires to both. So let's get our color-coded wire. Here's our red for positive, and we'll, I'm actually going to, in case we do come back and decide to put this, that bulkhead in, I'm going to go ahead and leave a little extra, a little slop in this, a little bow in this wire. Put about that much in here. So we're not having to cut a completely new piece of wire if we do need to come back here and add that bulkhead. I'm actually really hoping that we don't, that, that just moving these boards apart, because I know when you put distance between things that are creating electromagnetic interference that sometimes just putting some distance between them solves the problem. And so my hope is that that's exactly what we're going to have with this board. And because this is DC, there's no need to twist these like you do with AC because there's nothing to cancel. Like I said, we'll do a, put some tubes in it, do a quick voltage check to make sure the heaters are reasonably within spec. Make sure that the insulated part of the wire isn't down in the hole and that you're not just soldering around the insulation because obviously if you do that like see this one down here the insulation is going through the hole so you want to pull it out to where where you can see a little bit of the wire sticking up that you can get your soldering iron up against. And do note that they're re reversed from each other on each side of the board and that the grounds are both on the inboard side. Obviously, wiring this thing up backwards You'd end up blowing all the capacitors and you'd, be, you'd have a really bad day. We don't want that. Not when you've gotten this close. And again, watch what, where the barrel is. Make sure you're not like so focused on soldering this wire that you get the barrel of the wire up against this one of these nice capacitors down here and burn them up. 
I don't think anybody wants that either. So we'll get this positive hooked up. And our heater voltages are, they're not marked on this side of the board, they're marked on the other side. So we may have to get a little mirror. I mean, we could probably figure it out looking at the traces, but I'd just rather get a mirror and look up under there and make sure that we're hooking those up right. Sorry about that. I was off camera for some of that, so. I'm probably going to edit this out where I'm just showing you on this one where I'm making sure that I'm soldering to the wire and that the insulation didn't go through the hole and that we're not just soldering like we're not just like flowing solder around the insulation that's going through the hole. And go ahead and make a little tug on all of these to know that you've got a good connection. And like I said, I'm probably going to have to get a little mirror and look at the underside of this to see which one of these is positive and which one's negative. I can look through the top here, through this tube hole, and see which one it is on the, on the board itself. Actually, it's not marked, and I don't think it, it probably doesn't make a difference. Because it's just going across the heaters and there's no capacitors. I'm going to look and just make sure, but on the board itself, it's not marked. So it looks like it doesn't make any difference which one goes to which on the, on the heaters, which makes perfect sense. Yep, it's just marked 6.3 volts DC. And so um, there's no capacitors on this side of the board as far as the heater current so you can hook whichever one you want up where I'm gonna go ahead and just use some white wire for this and then let's hope when we put a load on these circuits that the voltages fall right in line with what they're supposed to be probably if you saw the earlier video that the Voltage on both the heater and the plate were higher than what is spec, but that's pretty normal for a circuit when there's no load on it. An unloaded transformer a lot of times will have a lot higher voltage than what it's actually rated at or what it's supposed to do when it's under load. So that didn't really concern me at all. Pretty normal for here. Here voltages to sometimes be, you know, at least a volt over what they're supposed to be until you get them loaded. And so, like I said, let's hope they come right in line and I can go listen to this thing and see what it sounds like. There we go. So let me go grab my couple of tubes, get my isolation transformer plugged in, and let's power this thing up and see what our voltages look like. Okay, we're gonna check the voltages at the tubes and see what they're running at. The plate on the final tube and the preamp is running at 200, a little over 290 volts, and the cathode is at 81 volts. So that's 215 volts across the tube, and the max rating is two is 300. So we're well within specs here. This is the other plate. It's also 295. There's the cathode. It's 81, well within specs. This plate's at 125. 
this cathode's at right at one volt. One twenty six and right at one volt on that one. This is the first tube. We got ninety two volts on the plate. Got point seven five volts on the cathode, and then on this one again. A little over 90 volts and around three quarters of a volts on the cathode. All the volts are even. This is a little higher than it's spec'd at. It's supposed to be 285 and it's right at 300 volts. Not concerned about that. We've got the tubes right where we want them. The other thing we want to double check is to make sure the heater the heater voltage isn't wildly out of spec. And we go across the heaters and we got 6.5 volts, which is a little higher than we'd like to see, but it's well within specs for the tubes. What we could come back and do in the power supply for the heaters you remember we had those 0.22 ohm resistors we could come back and put some half ohm resistors in there and see if that brings down the dc on the heaters but for now i'm going to go plug this thing in and see what it sounds like the other thing that i noticed is now the LED instantly turns off when you once you got a load on that circuit it drains those capacitors really quick really like how the tubes just kind of barely stick up out of the top of the preamp I think that looks really cool you can see how perfectly we got these tubes centered anyway I'm gonna go plug this thing in and see what it sounds like and I think I'm going to end this video right here and then do a final what this thing sounds like. And if it still has hum, we'll come back and install the bulkheads. I'm hoping that it doesn't need it because it will make assembling this so much easier if we don't have to fabricate up that. But if we do, we do because we're going to try to make this thing as awesome as we can. Hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, please subscribe, like the video. And we'll be back soon with a report on what this photo stage sounds like. Have a great day.